You know what'd be fun? Zooming in on photos, a bunch of different photos, and looking at them side by side. <laughs> hey guys, Omar here. I don't love doing these videos, but some of you are already messaging me, should I upgrade to the 40 megapixel Fujifilm X-T5 or the X-H2? The sensor, yes, is gorgeous, but um, how much more? How much better is it? Is it better? Should you throw your X-T2 away? <laughs> now, by the way, if you're watching this video on your phone, everything's gonna look the same. You might wanna go to your 4K TV and check out this video, that's right. All right, I'm gonna show you four pictures. One, two, three, and four. How do we look at photographs? We look at photographs on a screen or printed on a wall. And if we're looking at these four photographs, they all look the same, but one of them is 16 megapixels, another is 24, 26, and one of them is 40 megapixels. <laughs> You won't notice the difference if they're on a panel, if they're printed 16 by 20 and you're looking, in, <laughs> looking at them on a wall. Anytime you print an image, you have to think about viewing distance and an eight megapixel file on a wall that's blown up to 16 by 20, you're not gonna notice between that and a 40 megapixel file. It's only when you get up closer or if you try to blow things up, will it make a difference? So our first, the answer to our first question, should you 100% upgrade so far is no, you don't need to. But now we're gonna dive in. <laughs> so let's start with should you upgrade from the X-T3 or the X-T4? One is 26 megapixels, the other is 40 megapixels. Can you tell right away? All right, I don't know. Let's go over to Spidey here and let's look at the rivets. The rivets will definitely give it away here. So this is zooming in to about half, 50%. Looking at Annie on the side, I can't really tell a difference yet. All right, let's go further. 100, I need my glasses. Okay, zooming in 120%. All right, so the one on the left is the Fujifilm X-T3 and the one on the right is the X-H2, which has the 40 megapixels. And I'm telling you, look how much I zoomed in and they look very, very similar. Uh, let's go over to the real deal here and the words. Okay, 200%, 200% is just dumb. It's just dumb. But you could see it in the MCS. You see the MCS. But see what I'm saying? That's 26 megapixels versus 40. And it's like we're going way deep into the photograph. All right, on the left we have 16 megapixels, and on the right we have 40 megapixels. I picked up this Fujifilm XE2 uh, for about $279 <laughs> versus the almost $2,000 uh, other 40 megapixel cameras. So just keep that in mind if you're just starting out or if you're broke. Now, by the way, if I zoom them in perfectly 100%, uh, the 40 megapixel one being a larger file will look larger. So what I'm doing instead is I'm unlocking them here and I am just putting them at the same size just so that's, that's how we look at pictures is the same size. So here they are about the same size and you can tell a little bit more with the 16. Look at the 2016 Annie Leibovitz there. Looking at the rivets, here we go. But it's not that crazy yet. We'll go, we'll go in a little deeper for your pixel peeping nerds out there. But you notice that it is still a great file from the XE2. Here we go, let's do 100%. 100% equivalent. There we go, 16 on the left, XE2, XH2 on the right. So this is looking at about 100% equivalent on the X-E2. And uh, yeah, there's more detail, I guess, on the X-H2. But at 100%, it's not as much as you would think. And here, let's go in deeper, because I know that's what you want, right? That's what you want is to go in even more. So now you could definitely tell. So you could read the words a little bit better on the, on the Fujifilm X-H2 40 megapixel file. And you could see on the little... Um, you know, focus switch MCS is a lot sharper. 
All right, let's take a little quiz. One of these is 16 megapixel, the other is 40. Can you tell? Can you tell? Hmm. Well, it turns out that this one is 16 megapixels, but I ran it through a gigabit, what's it called? Topaz Gigapixel AI and made it a 8,000 megapixel uh, <laughs> long file. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, and just for fun, the Fujifilm X-T20, my favorite camera, which is only, only 24 megapixels. Let's compare it to the 40 megapixel file. And whoa, 24 versus 40. Again, you know, going 66%, um, you can't really tell a difference. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's go to about 100% on the Fujifilm X-T20, which again is a measly 24 megapixels. You could tell on the words a little bit here. You can see on the MCS, MCS. So does it make a difference from 16 to 40? A little bit, a little bit, but if you are using the full photograph, you're gonna to be totally fine with 16 megapixels and 24 and 26. All of those have enough resolution. I think if you are doing wildlife and cityscapes, I'll show you a cityscape in a second, you should really think about more megapixels because little birds and and the wildlife that you're capturing is usually very small on your sensor. It's very rare to fill up the entire sensor with your bird or your buffalo or whatever. So you're cropping a lot as a wildlife photographer. But everyone else with general photography, the older sensors are beautiful. They have beautiful colors and... Um, the real upgrade you're getting from the newer cameras is the newer processor and also the newer autofocus. Uh, I think that will just improve your overall experience. The camera will be smarter at picking up your dog, that kind of thing. So there's like, um, you're not just using a single focus point. You may not always be using a single focus point. You may let the camera be um, a little freer out there. So there you have it. Does it matter? Should you upgrade? Only you can answer that. Only you. All right, I'll see you guys next time.